Hi everyone, Clayton speaking. Um, I'm going to do a video for you about a, a really quick and easy technique that I use um, on my Dark Eldar vehicles just to get some battle damage and rust effects and just some weathering. Um, <clears throat> I've done some basic weathering on my on my Eldar, Craftworld Eldar vehicles you probably noticed which was just using um, the sepia wash. So this guy here. Um, I think probably in the Citadel colours, the Reichlin Flesh Shade would be about the closest. Um, and that's a pretty simple technique. I might run through, if I remember, I might just run through on a few of these armour panels. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. But basically this one is just going to be um, stippling using foam. So the foam that I use is just this old school... Uh, pluck foam that came in the blister packs in the Citadel miniatures. Um, I find that it's sort of the the little air bubbles, for want of a better description. Um, they seem to hold the paint just nicely. Um, I've tried to use the sponges that you would use for like doing your dishes and cleaning and things like that. It just seems to be a little bit too tightly packed. Um, so the separations. In this sort of foam, if you can see there, I just I just find that it the paint sits sits better on the outside. Sorry, guys, amateurish setup as you as you know. But if you can see how the paint sits on those raised ridges, and that's basically what we're looking for is those those raised ridges um, just to hit the edges of whatever you want to paint this will work on anything from a, a land raider rhino um any of these dark elder vehicles mechanica stuff whatever i wouldn't do it on elder vehicles because elder in the fluff they don't use metal at all so um it probably would look stupid on anything elderish or harlequin sort of thing um but with dark elder they use metal, so we're going to turn this into something very similar to this. So you can see the base color. This is the color I started off with. But again, this, this technique will work over any color. It doesn't matter. Um, but if you want to know what colours I use to get this sort of this ghostly hue, I started off with dark green from Vallejo, and the equivalent colour in your Citadel colours, which is this is an old one, but I use Dark Angels green, so you're probably looking Caliban green-ish around that sort of colour. Then <clears throat> that was a, a full base coat of the dark green. And then over the top of that, I used Scorpion Green, which again, with the, with these older paints, I just use Scorpion Green. And then to get this final colour, um, it was about a 5 to 1 mix of the Scorpion Green and Dead White. So 5 parts white, 1 part Scorpion Green, and it came up to this hue. So... That would be your white scar. So white scar and whatever the equivalent is of scorpion green now. Um, and that's basically given us the base coat and how it looks. You can see when I when I turn it actually there's some, you can see the dark green. It actually does pull through in real life. I can't really see it so much on the looking through the camera but you can probably see it through here. So all the dark green goes on first and then you just leave a little space paint on your mid-tone green, a bit more of a space, and then paint on the lighter green. It was all done with airbrushes, so I kind of cheated a little bit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and here is the Venom. So that's all done with exactly the same stippling effect. And you can see here, it's come up quite well. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. Um, but there's always a secret source, always a secret ingredient 
Um, this one's not too secret, and I would highly recommend that you guys get yourself some of this if you're into the weathering. It's the Vallejo Environment Rust Texture. This stuff is amazing. Um, try and do your best to get a bottle of that. Um, if you can't get a hold of that, or you don't want to get a hold of that, what I would suggest is use a Beastie Brown from Vallejo and mix it two to one of a crimson, this is gory red, but this is like the old um, crimson gore. Um, you could maybe even use like a, a no, I'd use, I'd, I wouldn't use a blood style red, I'd use a maroni, very crimsony dark red and mix it in with a, with a dark brown. This brown it is a bit chocolatey, that's why I mixed the, um, that's why I mixed in the crimson. If you've got a reddish brown, by all means use that, it'll probably work fine, but this is the go, I love this stuff. <clears throat> Alright, let's get started. Let me put some stuff out of the road, and let's see if I can't show you guys how I do this. So first and foremost, I use tweezers, and you want to rip off a little bit of foam, so you just a chunk of foam like that, and let's just pull off a piece, about that big will do. There we go. What I try to do with the foam is get it to focus. Yeah. is trying to have almost like a leading edge or a straight edge it can be very handy um, it doesn't have to look like that but when you grab the tweezers you sort of grab the tweezers on the point and it's going to give you a little bit more flexibility um, and a little bit more sort of control over how we're going to do this so this is going to be a step by step so it may take a while but at least you know that I'm not going to take any shortcuts. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do this. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to start off with just have it on black. Um, you could use any black, uh, as long as it's not a gloss black, obviously. I'll just get a brush and we'll pull some. Let's see if we can see that. Hopefully, yep. We'll pull some out. About so much put it on our palette and I just use a little bit of water just like a drop and just mix that through always clean your brush off okay get our foam onto our tweezers like so now, I'll just move the camera around a little bit and get this paint. And we're just going to dip the foam into the paint. You can probably see there. We're just going to try and get as much of the paint onto that foam as we can. I just want to cover it. just like so. And now what we're looking for is on the foam itself you don't want the paint to clog up those little aerated bits. So you want all of those little cavities to remain cavities but to have paint on them. Basically what I'm saying is you don't want that to be covered in paint so it looks like it's smooth. You want to have it looking rough. And if you think it's smooth, then just dab it like you would when you dry brush. Now, when weathering, basically what we want to do, any 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 damage, any battle damage, you always want to go, I always start with the leading edge. Um, and anywhere where I think there's going to be what, what you would call foot traffic. So, obviously this is a gangplank up into here. So we're just going to, just dab, you can see me doing that, just dab the foam where you think the foot traffic would be the most. It's as simple as that. 
just dabbing the foam like that. You don't want to do too much. Like, I don't want all of that to be completely black. I just want that to be, to look like it's been kicked, rubbed, sat on, foot has scraped down it, whatever. And you can see already that's made a huge difference to the rest of the vehicle. So, again, where you think they might put their hands, they wear, they wear gauntlets, they're wearing gloves. We're just going to dab it across there. There we go. Now, another little trick that I use, to get some paint, a little bit more paint. In these little bits here, you just put the foam in, just squeeze it in, and just drag it down. Squeeze it in, drag it down. And that'll give you a natural, almost like uh, an erosion effect. So the water looks like it's, it's going to run out of there. So you put that foam in, and just drag it down. You can see, pretty simple. And that's just that's just the first colour, that's just using black. So you can do the same in here, if you want a little bit thinner foam, by all means just rip off a little bit of thinner foam. That's all we're doing, just squeezing the foam in and pulling it down. It's really not hard. These little bits here that stick out as well. So we want to give them. You can imagine the wind's going to go over it. So it's going to it's going to catch the most amount of gravel, stones, soot, whatever. So we're actually going to go. You go up over, just like so. Not hard at all. And then along this leading edge, I want all of that leading edge to be... Oops, sorry guys. I want all of that leading edge to be battle damaged. So we're just going to get the foam. We're going to run the whole way along it. Like so. And then obviously on the prow... On the... Prow? <laughs> Don't worry about me. Um, on the front of the ship... It's going to take the most beating, so we just want to dab just along that leading edge there. We get a little bit more paint, we're starting to run out of paint, and we're just going to dab across like so. Yeah, wasn't glued on, don't worry about it. And then we're just going to put the foam in, drag it down. I'm in, drag it down, like so. So, in the interest of speeding this up, what I'll do now is, I'm not going to do the whole vehicle, but that was self-explanatory. There you go. What we've done is we put the black over our base coat. So, that set us up now for the next colour, which is going to be silver. So, um, basically... Any any sort of silver is fine. Um, I think I, I use mithril silver from memory. Um, if I can find it. I seem to have lost it. Oh, here we go. Um, so just this old school mithril silver. That'll be fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, I, you could use bolt gun. I, can't, I couldn't see why you couldn't. Um, like the, the darker sort of style of silver. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll just get our brush again. It's exactly the same as what we did for the black. We just get about so much. And just give it a drop of water. Just so it's a little bit pliable. And we'll our, wash our brush off. Get our foam. Now, I want to use the same foam, so you can see it's got the black on it. I want to use the same, I want to use it in the same way, so I'm going to get the same sort of consistency where we go along here. I don't want to change the foam up and have like a little, a little bit sticking out, like so, you know, and we're getting too much silver in one spot. We want to sort of follow the same, the same idea as what we did when we put the black on. 
So again, we're just sort of looking for that. I was looking for all those all those raised bits. If you're not happy with that, just dab it on something. And we'll see how we go. Now the reason I put black down first is because I'm a, I don't know I'm a, a little bit old school. I'm a little bit set in my ways, and it may not be right, but it's how I do it. Um, I always put metallic colors over black because it's the mirror effect, the mirror principle, where, where if you want something to reflect or shine, because it has metallic elements in it, I always start off with it with a very dark black you could use dark brown sure you could probably even use dark red but i always use black and what it does is it makes the silver pop it actually brings the silver out so what we'll do is we'll just the same same as before we're just going to dab now see how that silver pops straight off that green that's because it's it's coming off black So I just want to dab around basically where our black is. We're going to get the leading edges on here as well. You can just scrape the foam across. And that will just give us those those raised bits. They're, they're the ones that are going to take the pounding, so to speak. So we want to get the silver onto them. Now you can see the difference here of where the silver's gone on just over the paint. And it's not as reflective as where it's gone over the black. That's why I use black first. So we're just going to dab it. Now we don't want as much silver as we have black, if you know what I mean. What we want is we want it to look like the silver is the metal. So that's going to be the very first thing that this thing looked like before it went into the paint shop, so to speak. So we're looking for metal, then the black will translate through into what would be an undercoat or a primer coat in real life and then we've got the green which is your top coat so that's the sort of effect that I like to go for um, and also used to doing old school models we used to do beaten up Mustangs and Camaros and things like that and this is the sort of weathering effect that you'd use for that um, so we just want little dabs now you can see where the metal's showing through there very good, and then we'll just do that leading edge, we'll just scrape our foam across. Almost like a dry brushing technique I suppose guys, but it's not, it's it's stippling. You can see the silver along those edges, we'll just get a little bit more silver. We'll just run across our leading edge here, and then we want to run up across the top there. And then what we can do is we can get our foam in here like we did before and just pull it down just put it in and pull it down and there we go you can just see that very lightly on the edge there just where we got our silver and that's all we want and just put it in give it a dab if you got a little bit too much on there guess what it doesn't matter And that's the effect that's what we're looking for so <clears throat> next thing I'll do is I'll give this rust effect a really good shake up and then with this one I just really I don't even put it on the palette I just I leave it off to the side and then if you can see in there you can see those little granules sitting in there that's all I want to use but so I don't contaminate it what we'll do is we'll get a bit of foam that's fundamentally the same shape as the one that we used before so we're just looking for that straight edge because the last thing I want to do is put the silver we just used on that foam into the rust effects I don't want that so Basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip my foam in there like we did before, run it around, there we go. Nice and simple. We've got those raised pieces again. Like so. The 
that's all we're looking for and then we're just going to take the corner I just want to dab it on I just want to see how now see how I've missed there I don't want that so I'm going to use use my finger and wipe it off and guess what just put a dirty mark on there it's going to look even better so we're just going to dab on the rust just across the leading edges and up around here up on our handrails like so and there we go and then I'll just get it into that um, into that little hole scrape it down like we did before and there's some uh, battle damage and rust effects if you don't want to put the silver on you can put the rust effects on but it won't look as good it'll just look dirty I, I like that silver shining through there so that's basically it guys that's um that's how I do sort of battle damage and rust effects um, the other thing we can try just really quickly this video is already over 20 minutes which most people would have switched off by now but um, let me just yep yeah, so that works as well what we can do is with this bit of foam we've got some rust effects left on it if you want to do uh, a dirt windswept <laughs> effect put it on wipe it across just lightly just give it a wipe see how that turned out look at that that works so you can even use this stuff for the for a windswept effect if you want to there we go that's um simple easy weathering technique um, leave a comment down below if you can please I, I really do appreciate it let me know what you thought of of what way um, how my battle damage effects turn out like your, your rust effects and weathering um, obviously you can do as little or as much as you like um, this is going to an extreme um, this one here will will eventually turn out fairly much like this one um because i want that ghostly pirate that sort of ghost pirate ship look um <clears throat> yeah so let me know what you think um i know it's not using hairspray and and all of the other things um i can do that if you want to see that by all means let me know and i'll i'll try and see if i can set up a better camera um, where I can focus in and show you guys how to use the hairspray over a gloss over an undercoat and then we go over with a top coat and then I'll show you how to use the water in a, in a, um, a softer style chisel brush to brush it through and then I'll I can do that I just think that this one here for what we use in 40k um, I, I really think it works I just it's easy it's quick it uses a piece of sponge that's it there you go um, hopefully it'll work for you um, it's the only reason I'm doing it is because I was actually asked I, I put up some pictures on the the elder Facebook page and a few other pages and I had quite a few messages of people asking me how I do this technique um, and that's why I've just I've simplified it as much as I can because it's just it's quick and easy and I think it, it works really well um, so hopefully you guys will use it um, hit like give me a comment um, thank you very much for watching I do appreciate it all right take care and have a good weekend or week whenever you're watching this <laughs> bye now <laughs>